Rub up your engines! Now people are always asking me about SUVs, they're very popular, I often get asked about these Nissan Rogues. So I've got a 2017 here now, a lot of people are trying to find an economy SUV, they look at a Nissan Rogue. This thing's got enough energy, it's a 170 horsepower four cylinder engine. Take a look at it under the hood, it's got a 170 horsepower four cylinder engine, enough power to pull it around, but it also has the relatively weak Nissan Jetco CVT transmission. And that is the true weakness of this vehicle. I don't like Jetco transmissions, I'm not a fan of CVT transmissions in general. Even when they're new, as far as I'm concerned, they're relatively sloppy transmissions. Now this particular one gets about 26 miles a gallon in town, which is good for a SUV, and 33 on the highway. The CVT transmissions are efficient, I'll give them that. But number one, I don't like the way they drive, and number two in these Nissans, I don't like the way they fall apart before their time. I've seen scores of these Nissan CVTs break down. Normally the customer gets rid of the car when they find out it's going to cost anywhere from four to six thousand dollars to fix it correctly, they just give up on the vehicle. But on a positive note, generally they don't fall apart till they get more than a hundred thousand miles. If you're satisfied with that, uh, you can be satisfied with one of these rogues. As we check inside, all black, cloth seats but they're very comfortable got the usual dash just about everything you're going to see in a normal car and when you go in the back you can say <laughs> kitarama and the trunk itself these things have plenty of room inside them and you flip things back you can have even more room it's got the nice flip down armrest with cup holders got the heat and air conditioning blown into the back pretty well designed disc brakes front and back Stops quite well. Let's take it for a spin. Got the old keyless remote, so you just push the button. Starts right up. Now we'll see how it takes off. Not bad, but I am not a CVT fan. You can see it revs up pretty high when you're trying to take off fast. And for a little SUV, it rides pretty smooth. You know, you're going to feel bumps here and there, but it's not bad ride. It's got a decent ride to it. Now we got a little straightaway, we'll check it out. See, it kind of sounds like a motorboat to me. And uh, they, they just seem to be slipping to me when you're going. Most of the CVTs, they sacrifice acceleration and crisp handling. As you can hear, it's a relatively quiet vehicle. It's not particularly noisy. It has a decent ride for a small wheelbase. As a typical Japanese car, I put the AC on full blast, as cold as it goes, 60 degrees. It's putting out nice cold air. The Japanese are great with air conditioners. Now if you buy one of these Rogues, it's kind of a crapshoot. They make them in Japan, they make them in Korea, and they make them in the United States. Well, I know the codes, and if it's got the number five code as the first VIN, it means this thing wasn't made in Japan or Korea, it was made in the United States. So when we go down here, we see the VIN number, Number. there it is it starts with a five so this one was made in the United States even though if you look at the top it says by manufactured by Nissan Motor Company limited that doesn't tell you anything it's the VIN number that tells you now this particular rug it's three years old and if we look at the speedo it's got 57,580 miles on it so I wouldn't expect much to be wrong with it I'm doing a full wheel brake job because the brake pads are worn down to the squealer and it's all worn out aside from that he hasn't done anything except change the oil and thing so here brand new for 24,600 you're getting a decent SUV but on the other hand for two grand more you could have bought a RAV4 I'm too cheap to buy anything new but if I was I'd fork the two grand extra to get Toyota's reliability Especially you're going to keep a vehicle a long time, but as I said, this has got 57,000 brake jobs, the first major work done on it. Now yeah, the CVT transmission, it could easily break when it gets 100 something thousand miles on it, where the RAV4 would keep going. Now if they would have put better transmissions in these things, I would tell more people to buy them. But as it stands, the Jetco CVTs are just not great transmissions. They're a decent looking SUV, they got the design right, the interior is well set up, and for you people out there who really 
like saving money, you can get a used one of these if you can find a low mileage one. Tons cheaper than the Toyotas. You look for a good used RAV4, people want a ton of money because they're popular. Everybody knows they can last a long time. And even a really high mileage one will be super expensive. You can pick these rogues up a lot cheaper and if it's low mileage, you could have a lot of life in it and you might get a really good price. Just don't go out and buy one that's got like 140,000 miles and pay much for it because odds are that CVT transmission is going to go out and you're going to have a really big expense. So now you know a little bit more about the Nissan Rogue small SUV so you can make a wise decision yourself. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Larry's on fire at 65 says, I got an 07 Chevy Tahoe. It's getting horrible gas mods, but there's no check engine light on. Now, I'm assuming you did the obvious things like fuel filter, air filter, spark plugs. And if you did, and it's still getting horrible fuel economy, the main thing that craps out is the mass sensor, mass airflow sensor. It tells the computer how much air is coming in in grams per second to put in the correct amount of fuel for the same amount of air that's coming in. Those map sensors eventually will go bad. Like on those, I've seen them where at idle, maybe it's supposed to be 3.8 grams a second. And I've seen them say as high as 40 grams a second when they really weren't. So then it dumps more fuel in. Check the map sensor first. And if you don't have a fancy scan tool like me or anything, yeah, you can go to a place like AutoZone and you can buy one cheap enough, put it in. A lot of times it'll fix it entirely. They do wear out and that's 13 years old so they're not all that expensive you might just change I change a lot of math sensors on GM trucks my kingdom for a horse says I got a 2010 Mini Cooper I needed brake pads the warning light came on so I put them on and the stupid warning light is still on okay well it's a Mini and uh, being BMW they're evil people even though you can put new brake pads on, the system will tell you the brake pads are bad because it has to be reset. You know all those buttons you got on your dash and your steering wheel? There's a whole bunch of them you got to push in some insane fashion. It's kind of like a Rube Goldberg experiment. It moves here, goes up, down. It's just absurd. Me, being a professional mechanic, I just get my fancy scan tool. <laughs> I push brake system. And then it says, do you want to reset brake pads? I push yes, yes. And then it turns the light off. There is a way you can do it yourself. Google it, but it'll drive you nuts because personally I've tried that. And sometimes after 45 minutes of trying that, I just flat gave up. Now that I got the fancy machines, I don't care. I just push a button, turn it off. Yes, yes. And then the computer does all that stuff. But there is a way of doing it. You can Google it, but believe me, it'll drive you nuts. It's so complicated. I mean, that's, that's the Germans making German English cars and adding the German absurdity to the English lack of quality. <laughs> Anthony Banderas says, got 2013 Dodge Charger V8. I'm getting multiple cylinder deactivation trouble codes for one, four, six, seven. And it's running like crap. Hell, those systems are garbage to begin with. All those things aren't breaking at once. Realize that you need power to a system and ground. They have a problem with the ground circuit for the cylinder deactivation system. You'll follow it out. You'll see where it bolts to the firewall. It's just an eyelet that bolts in. Unbolt it. Clean it off till it shines. Bare metal on a firewall. Get some uh, emery paper or anything to make it shiny. Bolt it back on. I'll bet your problems go right away. I fix them that way all the time. They don't even make the grounds right on Chrysler's anymore. And when they don't ground, all kinds of nonsense happens to a system. So check that ground. Here's a ripoff for you. The new Tesla Model 3s, a bunch of them are coming with the old slow processor, not the new fast one, because of the coronavirus. Messed with production of it, so they were sneaking the old chip in instead of the new one. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like you think you got Windows 10, but you really got Windows 8.1 instead. Of course, once they got caught, Tesla said they'll upgrade them if you buy one when the new chips come out. But the newer chip, the 3.0 chip, it's been available since April. Realize that the 3.0 version processes stuff 21 times faster than the old 2.5 processor. So people are buying these Teslas and they think they're getting state of the art. Well, he's putting the old chips in because he can't get the new ones. <laughs> Back in the day when Apple was deliberately slowing down speed for their old phones to sell new ones, well, he went the other way. His new car is slower than his old car. Casa, Scotty, what causes power steering pumps to whine? Well, the reason they whine is because they're worn, and then once things are worn, a little bit of vibration, and it's actually a high-pitched vibration that makes it... Now, of course, you're low on fluid, it does it, of course. The other day, I had a Mercedes totally full of fluid, and it whined first thing in the morning and quieted down. Power steering pumps put 
put out a tremendous amount of pressure. They can put over 1,500 pounds per square inch pressure. A lot of pressure. And as they age, all that pressure, things are worn. And as they spin fast, they start to whine. As long as they're full of fluid and they steer okay, great. And if you find they start getting notchy steering, then yeah, you got to replace the pump. But I've had people drive uh, especially uh, Mercedes Fords for decades with the whining and they still work. And I say, ah, I always whine. I just live with it. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.